Atreus, are you ready? Yeah, but I had the weirdest dream. Fimba Winter was ending, and Thor came for us, here at the house. It was only a dream. But it felt different. It felt real. It felt like... the future. Then we will worry about it tomorrow. Today, there are still things we can do. Have no fear, Crescion is here. Welcome to another God of War Ragnarok Theory. God of War ended with Kratos and Atreus leaving their home. God of War Ragnarok can begin in tens of ways. Here is one way I believe it can begin. A story. And so our story begins with the scene of their campfire. Fimble winter is currently happening. The loud, cold, raging wind is blowing past the cabin. The tall, leafless trees are freezing. Some have even been knocked down. Snow falls upon the already covered ground and rocks. Kratos and Atreus are in their home by the campfire, staying warm. The camera finally pans to Kratos and Atreus. They're eating, relaxing, mending to their weapons and tools, and ultimately thinking of what is destined to come. Our point of view is pushed further back, and Mimir is also by the campfire, reading a book. The winds of Fimba Winter slightly calm down, and Kratos talks to Atreus, telling him how soon they will have to hunt in order to maintain their supply of food. However, while this conversation is taking place, wolves outside the cabin begin to howl. Draugr are also being heard. Atreus takes note of this and points it out to Kratos. Atreus says they should step outside and see if the Draugr are attacking the wolves, and if they are, they should help them. However, Kratos says he should not concern himself with anything that doesn't have to do with them. Atreus then says that he'll do it himself. And even if they aren't attacking the wolves, they'll try breaking into the cabin. So they might as well deal with them now. So he stands up, grabs his bow, and quickly walks towards the door and opens it, stepping outside. Kratos yells at Atreus to come back in, but he doesn't. So he then stands up and grabs the Leviathan axe. But just before he begins to walk, Namir tells Kratos to stop for a moment. Namir talks to him, explaining to him how he should let Atreus be more free, especially by seeing how much he's grown, his knowledge in the battlefield, his marksmanship with a bow, and ultimately getting stronger and more mature as a god. Namir proposes Kratos should instead let this be a test and supervise him from afar. Kratos agrees and watches Atreus while maintaining his guard. Once out, Atreus' eyes lay upon the Draugr attacking the wolves. He yells at the Draugr, calling their attention. And while doing so, Atreus swiftly quivers arrows and takes down the enemy Draugr, a display of how much further his scales have been honed with his bow. However, this may not be the same bow anymore, as Atreus has grown. After this happens, the wolf stops snarling and growling. A pause. Then they stare at Atreus and they begin to howl once again. As they're howling, Atreus begins to sense an emotion. But before he can pinpoint which one, he hears voices in his head like he did in Alfheim. Kratos has had enough and runs out. The wolves also run away. He asks if Atreus is hurt. And he answers, no. Elaborating on how it's only the voices and how they've become even more painful than when he was younger. Now they begin to argue. Kratos says how he should not get involved in the matters that do not concern themselves, as well as how they should only exit the cabin unless it is necessary. Especially seeing as how the amount of enemy Draugr has increased, the coldness of Fimble Winter lingers, and Odin, Thor, Freya, and possibly other gods are searching for them. And this is a fragment of their argument. Time is running out. The prophecies say Fimblewinter leads to Ragnarok. 
War is coming. My story doesn't end hiding in these woods. I should be out there, finding out who I am, who Loki is. I will not allow you to pick a fight with God. I don't want to fight anyone. I just want answers. And if those answers lead to war with Asgard? Maybe that's what Mother wanted. We do not know what Mother wanted. And from there, Kratos ends the argument and says it's time to hunt. Already having the necessary clothing and weapons, they walk deeper into the woods. While walking through, they encounter and kill Draugr. They finally come across a small animal. Atreus shoots and kills it. Then, Fimba Winter begins to pick up once again. Kratos says it's too thick to make out anything past arm's distance, so they seek shelter. After some time, they come across a cave, make sure there are no enemies, make a campfire, eat, and then sleep for the night. Kratos tells Atreus he needs to hunt a bigger prey this time. However, Kratos decides to put Atreus on yet again another test by letting him hunt alone in these harsh weather conditions. Atreus leaves, leaving Kratos by himself. He begins talking to himself as well as to Faye while clutching her empty ash pouch in his hands. After talking to himself, the pouch is placed away and he pauses to think of the current situation about how soon this so-called Ragnarok, the twilight of the gods, will soon begin. He sharpens the arrows Atreus left behind. Kratos and Atreus stay in the cave for what may be one or three more days. Kratos says they need to get back to the cabin as the conditions get worse and worse as time goes on. So they gather their things and leave. Navigating through the coldest and so-called winter to end all winters, they come across more Draugr and obstacles. Eventually, they make it back to the cabin. They both enter their home but it is as cold as it is outside. Kratos restarts the fire and they go to bed. Thor approaches Kratos and says that he wonders how his brother died to a fallen god who has become soft. Kratos then tells Atreus to run away. Thor caring more about bringing the end of the giants lunges at Atreus to kill him first. But Kratos gets in Thor's way and they fight. Now remember, the Leviathan Axe has Etir, the serpent's poison imbued into it. And since Jormungan hasn't been born yet, or at least grown big enough to be a proper opponent for Thor in our timeline, Kratos takes Jormungan's place and fights Thor. Through a gruesome earth-shaking strike after strike, their blows caused the world tree, Yggdrasil, to splinter, causing Kratos and Atreus to travel through time. Mimir then informs us that we've been casted backward through time, saying we need to talk to Jormungan in order to figure out what point in time we're currently in. Somebody just called the serpent.
you enjoyed this video, my guy. That's how I believe God of War Ragnarok will begin. One of the ways it can potentially begin. Because like I said, there are tens of ways that it can. So I'm really curious to hear the way you think it can begin in the comments down below. Let me know if you have any other theories that you would like me to make into a video as well. This is the first time I've ever actually done a video like this where I make a, a story prediction. So I feel pretty good making the story, typing it all out, reading it, narrating it, adding the music, the voice lines, all that good stuff. Last thing, shout out to you, Pubsy. You were the reason I made this video because I saw yours. Enjoy the rest of your day, dog.